What up? Jeff here with all my Bitcoin renegades. And today we're going to be talking about a few things. Um, I don't really have a set schedule. I just have a bunch of random information to give you guys today about crypto. Everything is looking amazing. Bitcoin is almost at 58,000. We're sitting at like 58.5 and we're, we're inching our way. We're chipping our way at that ceiling to move further up towards the upside. Now, Finally, some good news, guys. The graph is starting to go up, but not only the graph, but all DeFi are finally starting to move to the profits, guys. This is what we have been waiting on for weeks. I almost started to think, I'm like, did we have alt season before Bitcoin is going to go to an all-time high and then Bitcoin's just going to dump and altcoins are going to dump? I almost was starting to think that. That wasn't logical. That's not what's going to happen it could though. You never know that we could have had alt season before. That normally doesn't happen, right? Alt season normally happens after Bitcoin moons. But things are different in the game right now. And especially exchanges and all the people that are in different cryptos. People are trying to manipulate everywhere, guys. I guarantee. And it isn't just manipulate. That word is so overused and over exaggerated. When people say manipulation, you could even talk about just moving a large amount of money into a crypto or moving a large amount of money out of a crypto. Somebody could call that manipulation when that's just a trade that somebody with a lot of money has made, right? So you can't say that anybody who makes a large purchase or sale in crypto is manipulating the market, right? So we need to get out of that mindset that everybody's manipulating the market. Everything is going wrong. That way we can actually see when there is actual manipulation in the market and we can say, hey, this is why the miners did this or uh, this news did this. We, us as untrained analysts are here, you know, not only TA, but just analyzing crypto in general. That's what I do. I'm not just a TA guy. I'm not just talk about crypto guy. I do all of it. I don't do it all like in depth, um, but I get into every part of it and dig in and do my due diligence in every part. The TA, I've learned all of the, you know, fundamentals for TA. I still have a lot to learn. Trust me. There's a lot to technical analysis that people don't think. And if you think you can just pick up a book one day and learn TA in one day, you're going to run into some issues down the road that will change the way you think. But uh, other than that, guys, crypto is moving into a place that we all hope that it would go. This last year was only a dream. So this is what's so cool. And I want to talk about this a little bit because I know a lot of you are season at least a year or more so i say anybody a year or newer in crypto is still kind of a newbie i'm still kind of a newbie at 18 months you know i'm not gonna lie i'm not like oh i'm seasoned grizzled vet no but i have done my my research and learned and done you know all of my due diligence in crypto and spend a lot of time guys i spend a lot of my day looking through crypto and everything and <clears throat> the reason is is because about a year ago, it wasn't like this. Everybody was dreaming about crypto going mainstream, that we could see a $2 Cardano, that we could see a $50,000 Bitcoin, that we could see a $4,500 Ethereum when it was just $200 last year. 200 bucks. <laughs> Man, and so now the dream is happening. The dream is here. It is in front of our faces. And yet everybody is still like down and complaining and like, when is this, you know, top of the bull market going to be here? Just be patient. Enjoy this, guys. This is what we waited for. This is what we were hoping for. This is why we collected all the Satoshis and faucets, the little tiny amounts that they give you. Because it wasn't for now. We knew those amounts would go way up in the future. And that's the point of a faucet. The original Bitcoin faucet gave 50 Bitcoin away. 50. Could you imagine having 50 Bitcoin now? But back then it wasn't worth anything. It wasn't even worth like 10 bucks. It was probably worth less than a dollar. 50 Bitcoin was worth less than a dollar back then. 
And they gave it out to get people into Bitcoin, right? To show them, to get the word out there. And that's what these faucets do. That uh, my, my sponsor, TrashFaucet.com, his list of faucets bring you to places that give you a little bit of it for free just for solving uh, a quick short link or pressing a little uh, robot verification button or sites like Express Crypto where you can take surveys and earn anywhere from 30 cents to $10 a survey. Now, that's real money you could have earned. And if you did that last year when Bitcoin... So this is why I did really good in surveys. Because last year, when Bitcoin was at eight to $10,000, I was taking surveys, getting anywhere from $0.30 cents to $10 a survey. And I just saved all that. I put it away. Because I was like, this is for the future. This is before Bitcoin blew up. This is before the big alt seasons that we've been having. And I, I collected all the altcoins. I had like... You know, 10,000 Ethereum, I had 300,000 Dogecoin, I had all of it. And I ended up selling most of it at low prices. And now I probably would have been a millionaire, honestly. If I would have saved all those coins, I would have been a millionaire. Just from collecting from faucets, doing surveys, all of that stuff. So the dream's here, guys. We're here for Bitcoin. It is here for the long run. We're here for the future. It's here now. And so we just have to be strategic to time our selling at the right price. And then I don't recommend ever fully getting out of Bitcoin because it can make you profit multiple times. So many times in a row. So you can ride it all the way up to 100,000, sell your Bitcoin at the top, let it ride all the way back down to 30,000, and then boom, you can buy three times the amount that you just sold. So say you sell a $100,000 Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, you have 100,000 bucks. It goes back down to $33,333, 33 cents, right? Okay, so it's probably not going to go to that exact price, but this is just for this specific argument it goes to thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars thirty three cents thirty four cents on two of them and or thirty four cents on one of them and um then you could buy three bitcoin three of them so you sold one bitcoin at a hundred thousand now it's at thirty three thousand and you could buy three of them and you turn one bitcoin into three and then you wait for the next time it goes up to 100000 Then you have $300,000. Pretty simple, right? I mean, it's a lot easier said than done, but that's how it's done. That's what I'm doing. That's what I did before. That's what I'm going to do again. I did it at 60000 last time. And I actually made a video about it. You could watch it. Uh, I, I'll put a link right up here. You can watch that video. I made $10,000 in profit. And uh, that's when Bitcoin was at like 58, almost $60,000 I did that at. So yeah, it was right around this price. I took my profit last time and then boom, it went to 30,000. People were like, why'd you take profit at 58,000? Because I didn't know it was going to 65. That was before we had our 65,000 pump. But still, I was making a calculated risk. Actually, right after I sold it, it went to 60,000 right after, like minutes. I sold it, minutes later, it went to 60,000. I sold it at 58,500 or something, then it went to 60,000 right afterwards. Oh, well, the, I learned my lesson, but I made money. And then when it went back down, I was like, oh, 58,000, that was a good price to sell it at. Even though I could have sold it at 65, but still, you know, that's all in hindsight. How are you gonna catch the top, right? You have to, when, when you feel that top coming in, that's what I felt. I felt the top coming in about 68. I was wrong. That's, that's normal. But going all the way up to 60,000 and then 65,000, I'm going to know that I'm going to take some profit somewhere around the all-time high, guys. I'm taking about half my profit. I said 75,000. I'm not going to tell you the exact price. It might be before all-time high. It might be after all-time high. It might be, right, about 60,000. I'm not going to tell the price because I'm not going to have anybody front-running me and knocking the price down. So I don't think that you can really do that with Bitcoin, but still, I'm keeping them safe because I have my strategy. I let you know it. I'm just not going to tell you the price of it. Straight up, I'm giving you my playbook that you can use for your own self. You don't need to know exactly what I'm doing if I give you the playbook. That's what Michael Saylor did. He didn't say this is exactly what I did. He said, this is the playbook. This is what you do. This is what you will need to do to do this. Not what I did, because what I did is probably different than what you did, because my company is different than yours. My life is different than yours. My situation is different than yours. My money is different than yours. 
you know, the amount, not like our money is the same. I'm just saying the amount, our situations are a little bit different. So yeah, you just look at it like that. So now we're going to go in and look at these amazing prices, guys. I know I've been jabbering a lot, but I have a lot of just good information to give you guys. Just hope and lots of just, you know, solid uh, crypto stuff. This is for the crypto enthusiast, the person that really wants to make a life in crypto successfully. I am showing you how to do that. I've done it for myself. I ha Guys, I'm a human. I get down just like everybody else. So the last couple of weeks, my altcoin positions weren't doing so good and I made a lot of videos about it and everybody else was wondering why altcoins weren't doing it good as well. Yeah, Bitcoin dominance, we all know that, but sometimes it seems like it's something deeper than just Bitcoin dominance, right? So that's why I feel manipulation was happening right here with the altcoins and with Bitcoin and it could just be the way the market is though. So that's why I really want to steer clear of that manipulation word. Th that way, if it does happen in a situation like this, we can actually see it for what it is. So I think it could have been a lot of money draining out of there, but also people pushing money out of there as well because they see it was going down and it snowball effects. But now look at this. This is the cool part. Look at all of these DeFi coins now. Polkadot, Curve. RLC, XLM, just blasting off. So um, a lot of DeFi coins are doing really, really well right now. Clover, Scale isn't doing too good, but um, a lot of the other DeFi's are. Let's see, um, Anchor's doing pretty well. Ave, look at Ave. Ooh, yeah, 4%. And this is just the start. So, uh, Uniswap, all the decentralized exchanges, guys, are doing really well. All lit, Litecoin, Tezos is still doing good. Um, that's that's neither here nor there. Dogecoin's going up a couple percentage. Um, look at this. Waves up 6%. Algorand finally starting to go back up. Maker. Now, this is a huge DeFi protocol right here. It's only moving 1.22%. You know, the last bull market, we had so many different altcoins that could have made you a millionaire, like the Maker. Well, it, it, Maker probably wouldn't have made a lot of millionaires because you would have had to have a lot of money to make a millionaire in Anchor. But I remember when the price was $750. I first bought into Maker. Let's go look. I'll show you. I bought into Maker. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't. It's been a long time. Um, how much did I buy in? Oh, not very much. Just, um, yeah, I only bought like 20 bucks worth. But still, it was at $592. So, wow, I didn't know it was that low. Jeez, October 27th, 2020. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I love just going back and looking at some of my old purchases sometimes. I'm like, what was I doing there? What the heck, dude? <laughs> So, but look, man, I mean, it just went up so staggering much. Look at this. This is before the bull market. This was last year in October when I sold it, remember? And this is November. And then boom, all the way up to $6,000. So it went from 5,000. Okay, this could have made you a millionaire. Uh, I didn't know it went up that much. Uh, so 500 all the way up to six thousand three hundred dollars that's 10x right there so if you put a thousand you made ten thousand you put ten thousand you made a hundred thousand you put a hundred thousand you made a million you put a million you made ten million <laughs> so yeah these are the good things and you can still do this guys like we just had a big huge altcoin dip and it's starting to go back up you should have bought this whole last week that when I put out these videos saying everything is low, these are purchase prices. Why do you think when, when prices go down, I buy them as they go down? I'm trying to hit the bottom, which I did perfectly with the graph. Um, I did make one or two purchases that weren't at the bottom, but I finally got that bottom purchase and I, I put more money in at the bottom than I did anywhere else. So things are looking good. Uh, crypto's starting to recover. We are going to have amazing altcoin seasons and just a, a bright future for crypto, guys. I do want to go over one little piece of news um, before we go, you know, and say our goodbyes for today. Um, Ethereum's latest progress towards proof of stake. Well, this has a lot of information. I really think you should read this. It's on Coindesk. Um, it's called Ethereum's latest progress towards proof of stake. So, this article is amazing. Um, I want to read at least one part to you. 
down here. Hold on. Um, where is it? Okay, right here. This is the part I wanted to show you guys. Wait, what is going on here? Okay, hold on. I got to go back out of here and then... Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Pulse check. Validated tag. No. Where was it? No, now I got to find it again. <laughs> All right here. Okay. The transition to proof of stake consensus will not have an immediate impact on gas fees or transaction speeds. So this is talking about Ethereum trans, um, transferring from proof of work, which is an electrical intense mining operation that takes a lot of electricity to verify transactions through complex algorithms. Now, what they are doing is they're taking the electricity needed and putting it into the coin and using the coin and locking it up in things called vaults. And that produces the CPU and the RAM, which is actually the electricity used on proof of work, used on proof of stake to run the network, validate transactions, run nodes, and basically run the network. So, um, however, the upgrade will lay the groundwork for sharding which spreads the network's load across 64 new chains and is the key part of Ethereum's roadmap to scalability. So basically they're doing shard chains, which is like a side chain that goes, you know, it says, okay, there's a gas fee high right here. There's a gas fee on this shard chain high, high. So it goes to the lowest gas fee place so that it can send your transaction the fastest for the cheapest and i think this is the most genius idea this is the only way we're ever going to get ethereum to the masses is to get those gas fees down nobody can afford to send a 20 dollar transaction and pay 20 dollars to send that transaction nobody has that kind of money to waste now once we move i think a 20 dollar transaction should be at most one percent of that price which would be 20 cents so maybe 10 percent at the most which would be two dollars no that's too high i still think like maybe five percent you know um anywhere from one to seven percent anything higher than that is just kind of greedy in my opinion um so let's get those gas fees down now the higher the transaction of course the more the fee should be now when you send a small transaction a five dollar transaction your fee shouldn't be 25 dollars. like how can you send five bucks and it costs 30 dollars to send five bucks nobody's ever going to do that and um so this changes that so yeah, everything else, um, I think you should read yourself. That was the biggest part I wanted to let you know that the gas fees are going down, that things are going to look amazing for Ethereum in the near term, that, um, this change, it's going to take time, but it's going to be what brings Ethereum to the next level for it to be mass adopted and for DeFi to go out to the world. Now I want to show you the graph real quick. I want to show you Bitcoin because everything is doing amazing right now. 57,294. We just hit 57,771. Things are um, looking towards all time high ish. We went all the way to 57.8 and then we had a dump here. I almost sold off right here to a stable coin, but if I would have, look where I would have been at right now, right where I sold out at. And it costs a couple hundred dollars to do that. So I would have been in the loss right now. I'm glad I didn't do it. I almost was regretting not doing it. And then boom, it went back up. It's really dangerous to short Bitcoin in a bull market. Now, I'm going to try to catch the top though. Because there is going to be a top to Bitcoin, guys. I'm letting you know right now. There's going to be a top. And there's going to be a time you have to sell if you want to buy back in. Now, it doesn't make sense for it to go to 100,000 and then you ride it all the way back down to 40,000. That doesn't make sense, guys. So don't do that. Okay. So let's go look at the graph now. It's finally starting to move up. Um, it did just go down right now. It was all the way up to 71 cents. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to start dropping again because we have these double top things right here. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's going down right now. Unfortunately, it started to recover. Um, hopefully, DeFi is going to see more stuff pull into it. I really think it's time for altcoins to just blast off now. Um, Bitcoin might go a little bit further and altcoins might have to wait. 
a little bit longer to blast off. We're gonna have the biggest altcoin season we've ever seen. That's what I keep saying. So um, just keep your heads up, guys. If you are just kind of nervous or if you're happy, let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm here to, you know, talk with you, to help you feel better, to do whatever you need to get through to get to the next place where you gotta be. Like this is a place for anybody to come and just vent their feelings, uh, you know, not rudely, but you know, and just say what you have to say or you know ask questions this is a place if you need to know anything about crypto anything about you know what's going on just ask um, most of the time I answer unless I don't see a direct question or you know then I will answer you so yeah just leave the comments in the comments below subscribe to the channel if you're not and I will bring you more cool videos I normally bring you jam-packed stuff this was more of a video of just hope and encouragement and it wasn't a lot about a lot of specifics there was a few things I let you know but yeah all right guys that being said you know what time it is goodbye and good Bitcoin bang